Son, you better get out there and pick a switch because I'm about to beat your ass. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, we're taking a look at the Bandai SH Figuarts Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, Kylo Ren, and Rey with Dio. Holy dive! And maybe I'm riding the Mandalorian train too hard and I haven't been thinking about the new movie too much, or it may be these two characters are figures that we've gotten a couple times before, just in slightly different looks. I don't know. Going into this review, it just feels kind of like, yep, seen it, seen it. What else we got? Are they that exciting? <laughs> Hopefully by the end of this, I'll be like, well, yay, more. Let's just get into it. Looking at the package, it's what we're used to with the SH Figuarts. There's the window, there's the logo, the copper look for the prequels. We see most of what comes in the package, which is a good thing. On the side, pretty promotional shot of each figure. On the back, same thing, showing off different poses, different accessories, stuff it comes with, warnings, unreadables. Mm, 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 mm. On the other side, more copper, more holograms to show this is official product. Because you can't rip off a hologram, can you? On the top, same thing, lots of logos, lots of branding. On the bottom, legalese, warnings, you're winning lottery numbers. Let's rip these open, see what's going on here. First of all though, I may have forgot about this or maybe I did see it and then completely forgot about it because bases aren't my thing, but I got two free emblem stage campaign stands. You can see a little bit of the emperor right there. Let's see what's inside. I don't do a lot of blind box stuff. Is this, oh, well. It's got a logo on it. I rarely get a base with my figure art stuff, so this is a little bit interesting to see what actually goes on here. What is it, a model kit? I gotta build this thing? I was trying to figure out why this wouldn't go in. There's a plug in the base. I think there's a plug in the base. I'm gonna let a stand outsmart me. That's amazing. Oh, it pops out the bottom. If you try to put it on a surface and push the plug in, it's not gonna go anywhere because you're pushing against the surface. But if you just push through, it comes out the bottom side. It did outsmart me. Oh, not bad. It's actually pretty tight. Let's see what the other mystery is. Oh, cool. Okay, I got two different ones. That makes me happy. Instructions, fairly straightforward. I don't think I've had a figure with this neck configuration thing though. That's gonna be interesting. And then the old split the lot saber in half, put it in the hand thing. Warning, Dio is delicate. And then for Kylo, swappable neck, hold the helmet, lot saber on belt, not a big deal. Getting them both out of the package, I, I'm cool with these, but <laughs> I also ain't happy. Now, at least not completely. Looking at Kylo, first, I love the addition of this cloth cape. It's poseable, it's movable, and that's due to the wire running down the front, around the bottom, around the outside of the hood. So you can put it sweeping, you can put it swooping, you can put it just where <laughs> silly, bring it around his body, you can put it behind his back. The hood, if you want it deep in there, you got to bring it forward a little bit, kind of move it around. But I like how it, the wire makes it look like it's still laying down. I'm not having to wet it down to get it to go. I, it goes down because of the wire. And at first I thought, oh, it just sits on his shoulders. And I went to pull it off and there's actually a tab with a hole in it coming down around the neck. So to get rid of it, you have to take the neck out. But that's easy enough. You just pop it back in. Boop. And then getting to the figure itself, it's very nicely sculpted, very nicely articulated. But at the same time, it's very much reuse of the last Jedi Kylo Ren. Same wrinkles, same boots, same texture to the tunic. But that's not Bandai's fault. You become Supreme Leader, you don't want to change your clothes, I guess. And when you get down to it, it perfectly captures Kylo, so why not reuse it? I can't hardly blame Bandai for bringing it back around. That was a hard sentence to say. But we do get the re-welded helmet where, you know, he broke it in the last movie. Movie. I guess he's putting it back together this movie and for some reason the welds are red. It's not quite as bright as what we've seen in pictures and such, but at the same time, I kind of like it toned down a little bit. Plus, I always kind of like the look of this helmet, so seeing it come back, I, I'm perfectly okay with that. Even if it is a little bit Humpty dumpty -ed. And then when it comes to Ray, the figure looks really good. I should say more about how it functions, but it looks good. Again, the overall look of the movie is essentially <laughs> a mix of her previous two movie costumes with some different colors thrown in, or well, some mixed match of colors from those costumes. The Last Jedi Ray had this texture to the underdress part. She had full pants on, but the crisscrossed cloth on the torso going down to a 
hang them down on the side with a straight on this side, that carries over. But then you bring some of the colors from the Force Awakens Ray, bring her boots back from there, and then a different color for the shorts from the end of Force Awakens, first of Last Jedi. It was like she woke up one day, looked through the wardrobe, kind of just matched different parts together, which I guess in the real world makes sense. It's not like I go buy clothes for every different trip to town I make. And then when I say it like that, I'm, I'm kind of okay with this look, I guess. <laughs> Damn it. Because of the sculpt itself, uh, you had the wrinkles coming across, it does seem like cloth, even though this is not. They, they go for cloth with Kylo Ren's cape, but then left these plastic on Ray's lower half. Shorts are fairly plain, couple of wrinkles up there, knee pads. The look I can justify, the look of the figure will go perfect on the shelf, but then you go to messing with it, you go to move it around, and I don't know, I guess that's where most of my disappointment comes in. First of all, they couldn't mold that pin in the same plastic as the rest of the foot. I understand wanting to mix and match is this color up here at the knee, but really? Come on. I will get into this when we get to the accessories part, but that's another huge sticking point here. But my big thing is the waist articulation. There's a dumbbell joint in here, and you go to move it, and it doesn't do a damn thing. And the problem stems from this skirt piece here being part of the legs, while the hang down parts, the holster, the belt and everything is attached to the upper body. So it fits so well together almost seamlessly that there's no room for movement left in there. And if you do want to try to crunch her down or something, you go too far, it's going to come apart. There's a dumbbell, there's all the parts attached to the top. Like I said, it looks great, it functions like shit. How to fit that back together, which is not too difficult, but you get too crazy, and the legs also like to pop off. Which again is better than breaking, I'd rather them pop off right's the same way. Articulation is fine at the hips, but man, there is nothing to the torso. I'd almost just seal it all up. I get that it's the design itself. These have to come out of the belt, this belt has to be attached down through here, but I'm sure there could have been, oh god dang it, but I'm sure there could have been, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Get your ass back on there. Literally. This is an SH Figure Arts figure. It should go. But going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck going up into the helmet. There is a ball joint down here at the bottom of the neck. Can look down. Can look up. Oh, so much tilt. Yes. Dumbbell joint in the shoulder with this shoulder cap coming out to hide all that. So it looks very natural when you go up, down, side, front, back, down, around. That hinges up, swivels around. You can see the ball joint out there. That rotates on that ball joint. Excellent range at the double elbow. Very tight hinge, swivel. Look, a functioning waist, Bandai. The lower tunic piece is split at the sides and the front so it does get out of the way of hip articulation. The hip drops down, comes forward, back, out, pretty good. Swivel on that ball at the hip. Single knee, but it should, oh, well, no. Excellent range, can't kick his own ass though. Dumbbell joint at the ankle, so you can swivel side to side, go back, go forward. Excellent rocker. Toe joint comes up to about right there. And then for Ray, <sighs> Dumbbell joint at the top of the neck, I think. Ball joint down at the bottom. Can look down. Up. A little bit. Ooh, tilt. Swivel. Dumbbell at the shoulder, so you get forward and back motion. A little bit of up. Gets hindered by this. A little bit of down. Hinges up. Swivels around. Rotates on that ball joint. Double elbow. Amazing. Hinge at the wrist. Swivel. Dumbbell joint in the torso. Again, pretty useless. The hip does drop down. Comes forward. Back. Out. Not great. Unless you count this, and it's amazing. Better than any other figure. Come here, ball joint, you little shit. Rotation on that ball joint. Knee, oh, little past 90. Huh. Dumbbell at the foot. And rotate this way, back a little bit. Forward, nice. Rocker, and then toe joint goes all the way up. For accessories, we talked about Kylo's cape. It is cool. He comes with two fists, two splayed out hands, two relaxed kind of trigger finger hands. I guess those could be used as pointing maybe? Two tight grip hands, and then two loose grip hands with the thumb up, which kind of works like, hey. All the hands are fairly easy to pop on and off, except for the loose grip hands. For some reason, those are a little bit tighter, all the rest of them just pop right on. Other accessories include a lightsaber hilt. We're used to this. We've seen this several times. You have the red wire running up the side, some copper, some silver, a little bit of blue. And then there's also another one unlit with a peg on the side of it. That's to plug into his right side to have the hilt on his belt. But then there's also a lit lightsaber with, you know, <laughs> the blade out with jelly shooting out for both the front and the sides. And nothing complicated about this. It just goes into his hand. It looks great, works perfect. And then finally, like I showed earlier, it pops off at the neck ball, and you also get an unmasked hollow head. This time around, they just said, screw it, let's give it all the accessories. Pretty good likeness for the most part. He kind of looks like he got stung by a bee, but 
it's it's close. Kind of looks like he's been drinking some Kool-Aid. But I do like it a little bit better than the Prince Valiant look from The Last Jedi. Accessories for Rey. She comes with two fists. Oh, and we've got another case of... Darth Maul hands. God, those are tight. Behind the camera strength. She comes with two relaxed hands. She comes with two pointing fingers, which are actually trigger fingers, two tight grip hands, and then two loose grip hands. It's amazing how easy Kylo's are to change. And then you come over to Rey. Yeah. She comes with her handy dandy staff. We've seen this more than a few times from different figures from previous movies. It doesn't split in the middle like the Black Series one does. She comes with the lightsaber hilt and something I missed with the Black Series figure is this leather strap around the middle where it appears the hilt has been repaired from the last movie. There's black, there's silver, there's a red button. But there's also the lightsaber with the blade and of course it's blue. It looks dark against my blue background but it's not quite blue blue. It splits apart right here, I think they missed the perfect opportunity to kind of split it where it was split, but what do I know? You slip this into the grip hand, which is unnecessarily tight. You got to force it down in there. It's just, what the hell are they doing with this figure? Then you just have to blindly plug at the other side till it goes together. And then look, she's holding it. That's going to stay in there until the end of time. I don't care. She comes with the pistol. Again, we've seen this more than a few times. It's silver. It's black. It's shaped like the blaster. It can go in the trigger finger hand, which that's actually kind of nice to go in there. Look at this. I'm tearing myself up trying to put these hands on and off. But it also fits in the holster. And again, that's probably where it's going to stay forever. There's a peg on the backside. Just in case it does break apart, you can peg it in there. It stays in place. The head pops off at the lower lower neck. This whole assembly with the front chest part comes out. Then there's a hooded piece that you have to kind of pin the front, pin the back, and there you go. Looks great. Let's move on. Okay, there's some struggle to this too. You can't hardly put that on and then slip the neck in because you got to pop it in, but she has this hair stuff on top. So you take this off, you thread the neck through, which is kind of a tight fit, force the head into the hood. The hood looks good. It's laying on the head. It's not fish bowling up above it. But then you gotta put this thing on and you gotta line up the back peg and the front peg and the neck peg and get everything in there and go down and... Uh, uh. See, I missed the peg hole, so it's forcing itself up a little bit. Push in and try to force down at the same time while keeping everything lined up. And I'm okay with this look, kind of the Assassin's Creed Jedi thing going on. But you have the top of the neck articulation, you have a neck ball down at the bottom. But because of the hood and how it plugs in and everything, you don't have any head movement. So it becomes as useless as the torso joint. Then you take it apart and you have to find something to pry the head out of the hood with because you can't, you can't get at it. Again, not a huge deal, but <laughs> this on top of this, on top of this, on top of this, on top of this, it's just... <clears throat> <laughs> Putting the down hood back on though, not bad at all. You just have to make sure to push that back peg in. And then that pops on. Done. <laughs> Forever the down hood. But then the bright spot in all this is Dio. It's a nice little sculpted droid. These antenna things on the back of the head aren't articulated like the Black Series figure, but I don't know. Leaving them in a position where they're going to stay straight like that, a little bit uniform, I'm okay with that. There is a ball joint at the head. You can get side to side, up and down. Oh, you even get tilt there. And then the wheel itself rolls around the center point. But again, unlike the Black Series, it's not as loose. So when you bring in the clear stand and you put Dio in it, he's not going to roll, tip himself forward or back. The figure arts here is a little bit smaller though, which I, I it may be more accurate. It feels less clunky than the Black Series one. I'm getting a heavy Snoopy vibe though. Wait a second and I've got him opposite. Which way is the right way? Okay, it looks like it's supposed to be on the other side. On the Black Series, I had it opposite for some reason or they did or I don't know what happened there. But like I said, the Black Series wheel is a little bit loose. So when you try to stand it up, it stands up, you little d It just seems like the details on the SH figure arts is a little bit sharper, which makes sense. Height-wise, Kylo stands at about six and an eighth, while Rey stands at five and three quarters. Here they are with the SH figure arts slash Jedi Kylo and Rey. Looks like a natural progression, and of course these are the same size because of the same figure. I think earlier I forgot to talk about Rey and her face printing and sculpt and such. Looks just like the last Jedi head with a different haircut, which is okay because I really like the likeness here, so using it again, I'm okay with it. But putting them against the Black Series Rise of Skywalker, Kylo and Rey, uh, I hate to say it, but the Black Series Rey kind of blows away the figure arts one. I know you figure arts lovers are going to hate me for that, but it's true. I don't know. You take the legs and the arms from this and put it on this body. 
Hmm. But as much as I like the photo real, the Ray one is a little bit crooked. Her left eye is kind of drifting away, so I like the figure art's head better. How's that? But then when it comes to Kylo, if you're not a fan of soft goods, you get the plastic cape, but he is also bigger, broader, bulkier, a little bit more intimidating. And the red weld marks on the helmet are a little bit brighter, a little bit more red. But my favorite versions of the characters ever has to be the Mafex Kylo Ren with the Black Series robe put on top of it, and then the Black Series Ray from, is this the first island from? From the Last Jedi. Either way, she has my favorite face, and then I like this costume the best. And then, as always, here they are with Gus. Do you ever get older? Oh, I age, but uh, <laughs> I'll always be this pretty. So at the end of the day, I I, I don't hate them. <laughs> if I had to pick one to take with me on a road trip or something, I would pick Kylo Ren. He's just the better action figure. And while Rey looks good, and you can get her in poses, don't get me wrong, uh, She's just frustrating. Kind of like the SH Figure Arts Yoda, she's just kind of... She has hiccups. How's that? Some poor engineering decisions. And I don't want Bandai to keep going down that path. It's a dark path for all of us. Kylo brings a little bit something more with the cape, with the cloak, with the wired stuff. Uh, we saw it with Vader, we saw it somewhere else, and it works, and they're getting better. So I like to see improvement. With Rey, it's two steps back, both in fashion sense and action figure wise. So mm, like I said, she looks good. I may try to cobble something together, but I think if it came down to it, I'd go with the Black Series figures. Well, okay, I like the dynamic look of Kylo's cloth cape more than the plastic cape from the Black Series. But if you don't care about that part, if you just want cool looking figures on your shelf, go spend your 20 bucks a piece or well, probably cheaper here in a few months get the Black Series versions. Again, you figure arts guys are gonna tear me up, but that's okay. I gotta call them as I see them. But if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe on whatever platform you may be watching this on. Much love to the Plus. They get stuff a little bit early, but everything does eventually trickle out. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh.